collecting goods and produce from the southern regions and then taking it back up the Sword Coast, selling it, fresh fruit along the way on these ice ships. However, he came to, to Waterdeep, uh, was uh, on the land, got really, really, really drunk, and the vessel that he was on sailed away without him. So he has been in... Uh, uh, water deep ever since, adventuring, singing songs to make his way, and then singing songs and entertaining patrons in the various different inns and uh, um, keeps within the harbor area, entertaining nice. sailors. Nice. And you've also befriended a lizard folk who lives in one of the ponds that flows into the harbor. Of course, of course. And uh, he's got an in shark fin has an interesting background. He comes from a, a distant tribe. He's come to Water Deep to try to lay his mark and to break down the walls of discrimination against of liver folk. He's very concerned about how they're treated outside of the town. Um, and you guys actually meet at an interesting lecture that's given by Volohemp Gennerum. Oh, and yes. Volohemp is actually known as Volo, uh -huh. and he's recently published a book, uh -huh. Volo's Guide to Monsters. Uh -huh. And in Volo's Guide to Monsters, he's actually traveled, uh, you know, basically in and around a small city called uh, Faradin, Faradalin, <coughs> Fairdalin is a is a small mining community not far from the Neverwinter Woods, and in Fairdalin, um, he has discovered lots of different uh, monstrous creature communities. So communities of lizard folk and beholders, and he's actually done an uh, evisceration of a mind flayer, and he's basically going around giving lectures, paid uh -huh. lectures. Did he, did he ever see those rats so he can see their brains? He has. Cranium rats are covered in his book. And during his presentation, he gives you a lot of information about the cranium rats and what he's learned about the cranium rats, their habitats, what they what eat, race that is kind he? of stuff. He's human. Oh, he's a human. Okay. He's a human sage, I guess is what class you would give him. He's a, he's a, he's a lecturer. He's a scholar. He's a historian. Mm -hmm. He's very, very wise. There's a large kind of gandalf looking what's wizard it? in the second row. Uh, who's what heckling is, him what? throughout the presentation. Several times Volo asks this man to be quiet and to silence, but the, the just nonstop ribbing continues until uh -huh. eventually guards come and escort Elminster from the uh, presentation because of his Elminster inappropriate... Elminster gets escorted away. Uh, yeah, because of his inappropriate uh, rebuttals, commentary, and critiques. But as you're hearing about this, you, you kind of get the idea, the two of you, that maybe going to... Um, Ferdlin and actually, you know, sleeping where he slept and retracing some of his steps, exploring some of these creatures that he explored might be a really a, a fun thing to do. More as like a hobby, more than just you know, just kind of weekend away. Is he selling his book as he's, he's selling the book. lectures? He's that's selling what book. I was the book thinking. is for sale yes. and it's affordable. You know, he's also got posters. Oh, he's got um, pins. Would you maps, say? Maps, some maps. And some patches he's got, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> pins. All but sorts of stuff. Does he cover about cranium rats? Mostly, the cranium rat is not covered in much detail. He spends a lot more time on the mind flayers, the lizard folk, a lot on goblins and goblin society. What does he? You no, know, what did he talk about of cranium? Cranium rats? rat. He mostly talks about how they infest the layers of other creatures. They're actually a much more sentient and intelligent rat, and they work in a large pack. That's about all the information he gives you on the cranium rats. So, and so, what's a mind flare? A mind flare, you learn a lot about the mind flares. They're an alien race. They seem to be from a different plane. They have a very sophisticated society and culture and a very interesting biology. Most importantly, they seem to have a telepathic link-up to what he calls the overmind which seems to control all of their actions and interactions. There seem to be a society much like ours. They want to survive in a difficult world, but they also want to grow and mature the culture to become more advanced. So, does my guy, what does he cover about the lizard folk? He doesn't really talk too much about the lizard folk. He sees you there and gives you a nod, but he doesn't really go in much detail. No, um, you're in book. the Neverwinter Woods looking for stories to collect, hanging out in kind of like farming or um, lumber communities. There's a lot of lumberjacks and people that make their living from the forest. And, um, and you keep hearing stories by the campfires that this city, Phadrian, is being overrun by tourists, basically. And the, they've had to rebuild the inn to make it larger to accommodate all of these people. And you've decided that it'd probably be a great place to go and tell some of your stories because there's just a lot of tourists. There's a big audience. You'd be able to make a lot of money there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the next day after the great lecture, you guys head to the city. It's only about a day's march away. You're able to easily, these are well-traveled roads. And as you're walking these roads, you notice a lot of other tourists. Fairdolin. Fairdolin. A lot of other tourists and pilgrims and 
adventure seekers, some clearly right. insane people that are like going to meet mind flayers, mm-hmm. like they're out of their mind nuts. Oh, go for it. I thought he was coming to play some Dungeons and Dragons with us, man. I was like, here we go. I said, I, I don't know about it. Actually, my Yu Gi Oh team members play that actually every Friday night. Here? No, they play it uh, uh, up in LA. Some guy's house? Yeah, but it's, it's always every Friday. That's, that's, that's nice. what they did. We play every Wednesday here as part oh, of like the Adventure League. Yeah. But then this is just a one shot because like a new D&D book came out. Oh, I see. Got it. So, uh,. So and so you meet like some noblemen that are going like basically to hunt these creatures and to you know experience what Volo experienced. It's it's quite a it's like a Beatlemania kind of vibe when you're walking out there. My guy goes to find the lizard to see to study more to see lizard folk. Learn more about his culture and his community. Yeah, absolutely. You have a feeling that's going to be really easy to do up there. Volo did give you some some indication of where the lizard folk do live. There's a marsh just outside of town near an old rock query where he thinks there's a large community of lizard folk. My guy goes there. Uh, you head out of the Neverwinter Woods, you come to the the road that leads to Fairy, and you notice that there's a lot of tourists, and you know everything you heard was true. There are clearly people heading to this town. You join a small group of traveling. There's a lizard folk who you've never met before, and you fall in with them to learn more of his story. And a halfling named the Finn? Halfling. The Finn. Give me a, give me a uh, perception check. So it's a d20... And then here's your skills. And so insight. Do an insight check, which is plus two. So d20 plus two. On the map? Yeah, wherever you want to roll it. Oh, a 21. You think you've heard of this fin before as being part of a criminal network that operates uh, out of Waterdeep? Mm-hmm. You, you think he may be there to rob the town. You're not sure, but you want to keep your eye on him. Yeah. The fin is definitely a part of a larger crime syndicate that you've definitely heard stories about. I get um, so am I aware of this? No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> no, of me being a part of the crime syndicate? No. Okay. Oh, so you're saying there, there was someone else named the fin? You approach the town. Uh, the town. Uh, Does he question as you, the female as you lizard come, folk in the middle of town? Nope, no one's questioned that. As you approach the town, you're in a wild field of sunflowers. It's a beautiful area. You come down a rolling hill. Um, you see the town laid out before you. You can tell there's been a lot of recent construction. Um, it's early spring, so the ground is largely muddy, and the town is filthy. Like, I mean, there's piles of refuse. It looks like people haven't taken the trash out. The inn is, you know, there's a lot of. Um, just debris and stuff in the streets. It doesn't look like things have been maintained very well. How are you? Good, good. I don't want to see you. No, no, no. Do you want to play? We got spot today. Um, you guys are already playing, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we, we just today. started, but yeah. So uh, um, as you come out, you hear a rustling in the sunflower right next to you guys on the path. Uh, I investigate the rustling. All right. You toot it. <laughs> as, you, as you walk into the woods, you're startled by a very well-dressed kind of nobleman who springs up from the woods. My horse! Bring me my horse! And then he kind of falls back over in the mud again. My guy goes towards him and says, what happened? I've been robbed! And you can tell he's wearing very fine clothes, like the latest fashion in Waterdeep, but he's my guy says, missing an what? ear as well, Cody. His what ear is gone. you? The brigands of this town, it's terrible what's going on in there. Crime is rampant in the streets. I came here for adventure and instead have been robbed of my purse and my horse. Perception check. Yep. Yeah, he's missing an ear. In fact, you see who, the ear who is he on traveling the ground. With? Who is he traveling with? It, it looks like he's a nobleman that just came here for adventure. A nobleman he, by himself? Yeah, he doesn't Why? seem to be making stories. He probably rode his horse out here to find adventure. And m- amongst danger? And started drinking <laughs> last night and seems to have been rolled by the locals. Uh. Is, is your guess, right? But while you're checking him out, you do notice that his ear has been cut off and is laying in the mud next to him. Uh. My guy says, do you want to go to check a place where there's adventure? Yes, yes I do. I, I came here for adventure, but so far all that's happened to me is I've been mugged. I cast Healing Word on him. Do you? Trying to reattach the ear. Reattach the ear. All right. I have Healing Word. I You're sing a song. I sing ear. a song as I as I do it. Yeah, absolutely. He is grateful to you. I can't stop this feeling. He's like, you know, the stories that I was hearing at the inn last night of adventurers heading in and never being seen again, heading to the woods and just disappearing. I thought this was all a lie, and then I thought perhaps there were creatures in the area, but instead I think it's all a lie. I think it's just these this town is just robbing people. Town is just robbing people. Correct. 
My guy tells him. My guy name? says if we ever come, Can't if you want to join us on our adventure, uh, and if we kill a creature, I'll make a weapon for you out of the creature's bones. Oh, very nice. <laughs> uh, so like, he's he's start. up and mobile. He looks like he's been badly beaten. Hmm. His ear has recently been atta- reattached by, by your friend the fin. Join us. Oh, absolutely. Let's go to the inn and continue drinking. Continue with the merriment. <laughs> Yesterday may have been a fluke. And he... we, are, we are going to Fair, fair to Lynn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My and guy and he's... says I'm going to Swamp Marsh mm-hmm. to study my relatives. Yeah, as you as you come down this rolling beautiful rolling hill with sunflowers, you see this town that's definitely, like, they're rebuilding a lot, like, adding mm-hmm. an annex to the inn. There's fresh paint on several of the buildings. There's one that says, you know, Volo slept here. And then, like, a block down, there's one that says Volo slept better here. Uh-huh. You know, this kind of stuff. <laughs> Clearly, you know, people are selling Volo trinkets and things like that. Who's you, Volo? Volo is the lecturer that you saw the day before who gave a lecture on on uh, monster history. Volo had human sage who had written an extensive book. Wait, is that guy Volo? No, no. His name is... Bafflin. Bafflin. <laughs> the half-elf bard. You met him on the trail, Cody. Got He's it? very interested in your lizard-like ways. My guy says, my guy says I do not, hey dad, yeah. can my guy be an orphan or something like that? Absolutely. So that, so that way my guy doesn't know much about his nature. Yep. You're an orphan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my character just, doesn't sorry, know God. anything can about his nature. Yeah, 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 for sure. So it's Scott? Oh, oh, Brian. 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 I'm going to remember this, Brian. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Mark. Yeah, I don't think you have a DCI number. Have you ever played DCI Dragons in the store? I got a card. I can yeah, this is Ben is new, so let's get him to play the card. Yeah. But you know what? I'll do it at the end. So, Absolutely. So I don't want to interrupt you guys. So. No, it's, if you have the form, we can fill it okay. out. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, okay. The, the store gets credit for when we do this, so they get discounts on, like, Magic the Gathering cards and stuff like that, so we sign up. Nice. That's very funny. I just told Kate that she had a water bottle like that that she'd lost. <laughs> I think I was describing your water bottle. You I lost the, the other one. I have, what's that? Have you bring it? <laughs> Deadpool song. Uh, they also played Woodstock 99. I didn't know. That. Very inappropriate set. Uh, so as you walk into town, you see a man uh, step out from what appears to be a smaller building, not one of the main inns or... Uh, I just play Orphans a lot in the game, so that way I can just play outside my character zone. What's your name, so. son? My guy's character's in reality. Yeah, I'm not an orphan, my... But in the game, my character is an orphan. Got it? And what's your character's name, Cody? His name is Shark Finn. Shark Finn. I think I've heard of uh, Finn family. I might have known a Finn father. Perhaps. I'll, I'll keep an ear out. <laughs> oh, yeah. you may be able to track down your parents, Cody. That would earn him inspiration and great renown. Um, guys nailing up a sign... Uh, outside a smaller building, maybe like a uh, guild hall or something. He looks around, he sees you, and... What hail, new adventures! Come quickly, come quickly! <laughs> we, I go. I go. The other, the other people... I do a, a lot perception of, check. A lot of people on perception the Perception check. Right Natural 20, nice work! Why yeah. is he calling for adventures? It, it looks like he may be a sheriff or something along those lines. A uh, guild leader, perhaps, or of a, of a mercenary guild or something like that. Mercenary? But definitely, like, um, oftentimes cities uh, hire mercenaries to do mm-hmm. security around the perimeter of the town to make sure that uh, creatures don't attack the town and they keep track of all the cold and that kind of stuff. My guy pulls out his mace. Uh-oh. My guy uh, is a level... Several of the other travelers that you've been kind of no, walking on the road with, they look around with a call for adventurers and start kind of like wandering the other way. And I joined those guys. They pretend like it's not them. <laughs> All right, so you're going to head the other direction towards the... So you guys rush up to see what he's talking about, and he says, we have had a major problem. Um, we had, as you can imagine, in a town of this size, uh, you know, some orphans and other people living in the local orphanage, and with the influx of new wealth... Um, we've had several families uh, interested in adoption, and so we adopted out two of the kids um, to what uh, was a, a family, a, a, a rich elven princess adopted two of the children from the town. My, uh, my, my character catches an ear and kind of <laughs> starts walking over. Yeah, it was, it was Milak, M-I-L-A-C-K, and Aphenia were the adopted children. Uh, the woman, the elf that adopted them was supposed to report back when she re- returned to her village. We haven't heard back from them. 
It's been three days, uh, so we think we should have heard back. Uh, we've had a lot of people go missing lately. There's been a lot of chaos in the town with all these people here, um, but we need to hire some people to just go out and investigate where she's gone. She was cutting my through the Neverwinter Woods guy, to get back to the I'm elves. I'm willing to investigate as my guy goes walking Describe in. Describe the process on the adoption here. Is there any background checks or any sort of uh, paperwork that you get on these people that you adopt these kids out to? You know, we've had a lot. I mean, uh, as you can imagine, on a border town like this, we've had a lot of problems with orphans, and so we don't do a lot of background checks. So oh, anyone, anyone can stop by and just pick up a kid and you give them a well, kid? Well, I mean, we, we make sure that they seem appropriate. We do some general scrutiny. Describe the scrutiny. <laughs> names. Um, do you know the names of the people that adopted these kids? Uh, yeah, it, the, her name was Delzy. Delzy. D-E-L-S-Y. What does she look like? Typical elven woman, very well dressed. Uh, she appeared to know a lot about the town. Um, like she was from an elven community that was nearby, perhaps somewhere in the Neverwinter Woods. She knew a lot about Master Volo. When she was in town, she seemed to be one of his ardent fans or followers. She seemed to have studied his work and was definitely connected to him in some way. Maybe even more than just the current fad, like she had known about him previously. Mm. Mm. He's quite an amazing man. Oh, yes. He's done wonders for the town. Unfortunately, my ability to keep security here has fallen by the wayside. And as the town continues to grow in their greed, we've started having more and more problems like this. I really could use some adventures to help my fortify guy, the militia. My guy's helping. Absolutely. Who's, who's the two queens? Athena and who else? The two queens. Of whatever you named earlier? The two kids. Milak and Athena. Well, the two kids. Those Delphinia. are the, the adopted children. They were six years old. To Delcy. To Delcy. Who Delcy, was the princess? Delcy is... She, I'm not sure she was an elven princess, but she looked like an elven princess. But you mentioned a princess. Who's the princess? The, yes. Delcy, the, the elf that adopted the children, she seemed like nobility or something. Uh, she was definitely a high elf of some sort. High elf of some sort. Let us go and look for Delcy. Any direction on where she went? I don't know. So let me get this straight. I You're guess. giving these kids to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, we will give you a hundred gold piece reward if you can um, find the location of Delcy and ensure that the children are safe. There may be expenses along this way. Is there any possibility that we might be well, able to Well, we have more get... work. I mean, there's absolutely more work. And we have equipment. We can help equip you if you need uh, tools or, or rations or anything my like that. Like, weapons? We... Weapons, my absolutely. Just... We have the, my, my the, the militia's like... armories at your disposal. My guy's like, I don't need anything. You're ready I to go. My guy has a fast swimming speed, so my guy's fine. And the, and the direction swimmer, he points into the Neverwinter yeah, Woods, yeah, you've been kind of like on the southern tip of the Neverwinter Woods. My guy wants story. jewelry. Jewelry? Yeah. Uh, perhaps the elves can assist you with jewelry. We don't have a lot of jewelry in town. Mm. I'm sorry. Well, what do you have? We have gold. <laughs> I'll take some. 100 gold each if you are able to retrieve the children or my assure that they're safe like, and they've safely made it to the new community, and, their new I family. I will take the gold and tell I've succeeded. Uh, absolutely. They're not giving us much leads here, though. Uh, the the elf was returning to the elven community through the Neverwinter Woods. When the direction he points in the Neverwinter Woods, you're kind of on the the woods are are here. You've kind of gone up like this, so you've been exploring down here in the kind of like southwestern tip of the woods, and he's pointing more towards like the center of the woods, Correct. where there have historically been a lot of problems with the Red Wizards of Thay. They had built a huge number of teleportation portals and tried to amass an army hidden in the woods and attacked Waterdeep in gotcha. the last 15 years. Oh, so you're saying, um, and did they drive the wizards out of here? You're not aware of any elven communities in that direction, by the way. <coughs> My guy tosses his gold back. What's the best I can buy with this? Do you want weapons, or what are you looking for? Everything to arm me for your quest. <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's, the, the armory is open to you, so he will give you long swords and crossbows. Whatever you recommend. Even plate mail? No, they do not have plate mail, unfortunately. They've actually sold out of all their plate mail. I, I have all the weapons and armor that I need. If you're in an army, you can't be an army without plate mail. That's a good point. Plate mail is important in an army.